a new year brings a new Samsung phone, this year being the S24. It looks similar to the S23 model which I missed out on taking apart last year as I was overseas. But has Samsung done anything to improve their repairability, or has it gotten worse? We'll take apart a new Galaxy S24 to find out. This year I've only purchased one device, as parts pairing hasn't been an issue with Samsung's flagship series in the last few years, so I'm hoping that this hasn't changed. But what we can see is the internal design of their latest phone and see how it compares to previous models. Take away the cameras and logos and most people wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the newest iPhone and Samsung. I think Samsung used to be a little bit more bold with their designs, but now they just seem to be copying Apple one to one. While following a market leader like Apple can be a good market strategy, I think Samsung has lost its distinctive edge trying to be an alternative iPhone. I thought there was no accessories included this year till I looked in the lid and found the SIM eject pin and USB-C cable. I can complete the phone's initial setup, which is a lot of opting out of Google and Samsung things with a restart thrown in the mix, for some reason. I can't believe we're up to Android version 14. My phone still runs Android 8. Anyone else rocking a really outdated version of Android? I hope I'm not alone. So it's over to the heat plate, where I can tackle the glue holding this phone together. The heat will help soften the glue, not only making it easier to open, but it'll also minimise our chances of cracking the glass back. If you can't lift the back up enough to insert a plastic pick when using a suction cup, the phone hasn't absorbed enough heat. Sometimes it takes a few goes, but I got this one on the first attempt. I can easily say the glue is like previous models. It's strong enough to keep liquid and debris out, but still straightforward to remove. At a first glance, Samsung is using the same internal layout as previous models, which if you ask me, is a good thing. Because why change what isn't flawed? However, there is something new that wasn't found in the last Samsung I disassembled, which was the S22. And once we remove the wireless charging coil, we'll be able to see this new addition. That green tab is Samsung's attempt at making a battery easier to remove, but is it? Before we find out, let's take out the earpiece speaker so we can see the new motherboard. Despite the iPhone and Samsung looking the same from the outside, inside it's a different story. The Samsung has less cables, less screws and fewer pieces, yet the important things are still accessible. But the battery has always been the hardest part to replace. So much so, Samsung would only sell you one if it came attached with a new display assembly. You couldn't buy it by itself. Even Apple has had a method for removing the battery with the use of stretch release adhesive. Although being a bit temperamental and requiring the removal of other internals, when they work, they are good. So what about Samsung's new release tab? You need to remove three cables to access it, but its large size means that you can get a good grip. But it doesn't matter how big the pull tab is if the adhesive is still too strong. This battery was barely moving. To avoid damaging the surrounding cables, I'll detach them first, which does require the removal of the speaker. Funnily enough, that's exactly what you have to do when removing an iPhone battery. Like previous models, there's a little arrow telling you where to unclip the speaker. Usually I'd use some heat or alcohol to help soften the adhesive, but with this new system, I wanted to see just how much force you'd need to get it out. And it was quite a lot. Seriously Samsung, it's sandwiched between the mid-frame and back glass. There's only a really small gap to allow the battery to breathe, so it barely needs anything to stay in place. So if you're working on one of these newer Samsung phones, I'd still be using something to soften the adhesive like heat or alcohol. The only benefit to the pull tab is you no longer have to jam a tool beside the battery to pry it out. So there is an improvement, even if it's not a big one. The battery from the S24 is rated at 15 watt hours with a capacity of 4000 milliamp hours. Back inside the phone, we can remove the charge port and SIM tray, which is held in with three additional screws. 
Not only is it easy to replace, but it and the display have modular cables. So if you do happen to damage them while removing the battery, you can replace the individual cables, not the whole screen. Just two more screws need to be unfastened before the motherboard and camera can come free. Powered by Samsung's Exynos 2400 or Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 depending on region, with 8 or 12 gigs of RAM and up to 512 gigabytes of storage. With that, the S24 is basically an empty shell. One thing worth noting is the cameras tend to only work with the same model. So if you're replacing the cameras, be sure to get the correct camera for your model, whether that be Exynos or Snapdragon. But with that, we have fully disassembled the Galaxy S24. Held together with 23 Phillips screws, all of the same size, not only is it a manageable phone to disassemble, but it's almost foolproof. And the new battery tab can help you get the battery out if the adhesive has already been softened with heat or alcohol. As for the display, while its cable is detachable from both sides, you would have a difficult time replacing it from the front, as the cable has no slack. Still, the intended and easiest way to replace the display is as one assembly, with a new frame already attached. This is why I have not removed the OLED from the mid-frame during this teardown, as I wouldn't recommend anyone try this method. Reassembling this phone is as easy as it came apart. We can reuse the battery adhesive as it's still plenty strong enough. Once I get one side lined up, it can be rotated into place. Preceding that, the motherboard can be fitted and have its required flex cables attached. Sometimes having too many unnecessary modular components, flex cables or screws does nothing but slow a repair down. I think this phone has done a good job at being both simple but easy to repair. The only things left to attach now is the earpiece, wireless charging coil and back panel. With that, we can dust out the insides before attaching the rear glass. And we're done. So this is it, the Samsung Galaxy S24. It's got good repairability and is very similar to that of the S23, which was basically an S22, which was like an S21 and that was kind of like the S20. Nothing has dramatically changed in years and the same can be said with other manufacturers too. It seems smartphone innovation has plateaued with the attention now on other technology like VR and AI. But if you're looking for a phone that's physically simple to repair, Samsung is worth considering. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the phone teardown and repair assessment playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.